Hello, we are here to celebrate a very special award, the Hap Holmes Award going to the Admirals goaltending tandem of Connor Ingram and Troy Grosnick. It goes to the goaltenders who have appeared in 25 games or more for their teams and have the lowest goals against average in the AHL season. Uh, Connor, Troy, thanks for doing this and congratulations. That's pretty great. Thanks for having us, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, I think Connor will say roughly the same thing. It's uh, kind of a cool award that we both get to share it. Um, but uh, I think when it comes to goals against, obviously a lot of that has to do with the guys in front of us and, and playing good defense, boxing out, letting us see shots. So, um, and it obviously doesn't hurt to play in the offensive end uh, and play down in the other end so that we don't see as many shots. So, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the team that we had playing in front of us. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool to share it with Connor. Yeah, exactly what he said. It made our job pretty easy most nights, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I really like Milwaukee, and I really like their team. And I think we had a good shot if we ever got the chance to get back at it, but uh, some weird circumstances, and I guess this is a bit of a silver lining for us. Well, it's uh... – it's, it's a neat award, guys, in the fact that it's not subjective. It's not a vote per se. It's based strictly on statistics. And there are, there's the goal scoring award and the points award and the goals against average award. I mean, that's, those are tangible, inarguable awards. And that, that's a nice thing to have, I would imagine, Connor. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's something nice that uh, you can put on a resume, I guess. But uh, like Troy said before, it's it wasn't a lot of us. We didn't work very hard most nights, and guys made our job pretty easy. Troy, when you look at this season, uh, I don't know if the plan all season long was to go rotate games, but for the most part, with the exception of, of a little injury or a call-up here and there, um, you guys rotated every single game. That's, a, that's kind of unheard of in hockey nowadays. Yeah, it was just one of those things that we kind of got on a roll doing that way, and Carl was always straightforward with us. Obviously, we had two goalies that we were real confident going into the season with. And Carl was just honest with us. He was like, you guys are each going to get your chances and we'll kind of take it as it goes as the season develops. And it's just one of those things where, you know, there's no reason for us not to keep just rotating. Like everything was going well. If, if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. So um, I think that was kind of Carl's mindset going through the season. And um, yeah, we just kind of wrote it out and obviously Connor and I have a good relationship. So when, uh, when we weren't playing, we were each other's biggest fan. And it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun to be in a tandem like that. We've talked a lot about this and, and fans always question it too. I always ask about it. And Connor, I'm curious, Troy said you guys were the, each other's biggest fans when you weren't playing. I'm just curious how, how it was for you and, and, and how positive it may or may not be that, you know, no matter what you're playing the next game. Yeah, it was it was really good. It was uh, it was nice to know. It's it's different, kind of uh, your whole life as a goalie. You you wait for that text, that phone call the night before, kind of thing. But once we got going, and you never had to worry about it. And uh, Troy, Troy and I did have a good relationship. You knew if uh, if I ever did anything stupid or or laughed about something, I could pick my head up, and Troy would be the first guy to make fun of me. So it uh, it was a lot of fun. You need that levity, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Uh, still to this day. I, I know Troy, when he picks up pucks in practice, is, is still going to make fun of me every time. <laughs> well, Troy, uh, Troy has said this on a couple of occasions on things we've done, but um, Troy, meeting Connor and playing with Connor this season, it's, uh, it's opened up a path to your son to become a goaltender at, the, at a high level. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, he loves Connor, so, you know, always wants to be Connor when, when he puts on the pads. So. And like I said before, like, all the power to him. Like, if he turns out like Connor, I probably did something pretty good. I'll, I'll touch, too, on what Connor said, just a little funny story from the season, how we didn't have to worry about texts. Most of the season, you know, Rooker would text us just, you know, hey, you're going in tomorrow, just kind of out of an abundance of clarity. But there's a stretch there. I think we were on the road most of it, actually, when we were going through kind of like – I think it was during that 13-game winning streak that we had. And Rooker was actually in Europe doing scouting and stuff. And, uh, like, Connor and I weren't getting texts. And Rooker had assumed that Carl was telling us. And Carl had assumed that Rooker was telling us who was playing. But we just knew because of the – just because of the thing. But they thought each other were, were uh, 
telling which goalie was going, but we just kind of had it all assumed and all worked out and just, you know, keeping it smooth. You want all the communication you can get, and then you get no communication. Yeah, but I think it was an abundance of clarity already, just because it was so clear already that uh, I don't think it was really as necessarily as, as it might normally be. It's an interesting spot, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll start with you, Connor, on this, but you had alluded to it, um, not getting the chance to play in the playoffs. It would be second round roughly right about now, um, perhaps heading into the third round, depending on how, how well everything was going. Um, do you feel a little cheated that you didn't get the chance to play in the tournament? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, obviously, like when you have a team like this, it's uh, it's it's a little harder to take for sure. But uh, when you take a look back at it, you know, you look at what's going on around the world and stuff like that. You you kind of realize that uh, it's more it's more about the world than it is about us hockey players. You know, you'd love to get in an empty building or, or things like that, but it's a uh, it's a tough spot to be in, and I don't think you can be upset about it or anything like that. It's it's something that. Uh, we'll probably never see again in our lives. At least I hope we don't. And it's, uh, it's just a tough spot. It would have been a lot of fun. Uh, I've only been in, I guess, two series in my AHL career. So it would have been fun to, to see what we could have done. Troy, at the same time, though, you can't take for granted the fact that you guys were eight points ahead of the second best team in the American Hockey League and won the regular season championship. Wins in October matter. Wins in November matter. A 13-game winning streak, it all matters here going down – throughout a season oh yeah for sure and I mean I think that's one thing that uh you know I think the coaching staff did a great job of of, of preaching to us early was you know obviously the year before we went through a tough stretch to try to even just make the playoffs we were playing play, playoff hockey already for two and a half months um when we got there so um I think that was preached early and often to us that every game counts every two points count and uh you know, it's it's one of those things that obviously the once once you start playoffs, everything's erased. But um, it definitely would have made life going into the playoffs a little bit easier, a lot less pressure on us, so that we could you know potentially get a little bit more healthy or you know focus on a few things. But when it comes to playoffs, even though we had you know a big lead in the regular season hunt and and all that, you know, it's a new season, so. Um, there was no guarantees that we were going to win a Calder Cup, but once you start to get a little bit older like me, like you want every chance you can to, to win a championship. And um, so that hurts. But like Connor touched on, um, you know, there's a lot bigger things going on in the world uh, right now. So, you know, we'll take our medicine and, uh, you know, we just know and, and rest easy in the fact that we did everything that uh, we could that was within our control to, uh, to go after that goal. And, a regular season championship isn't too bad either. No, absolutely not. I'll close with this, and, and we'll, Troy, I'll, I'll keep it with you as we close, but both of you will have this. Um, give me a highlight or a couple of highlights from this past season. Oh. <laughs> uh, we all know the answer that's coming here. I mean, the fight was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I always really wanted one, and I finally got the fight. Um, but, I mean – yeah, that was just one little moment, and I mean, it's something I wanted to do my whole career. But really, just thinking back to the season, I don't know if there's necessarily one highlight. I I think I think my favorite thing was Connor made some sort of diving save, and I was just like, oh, maybe he's learning a thing or two from me because I'm diving around, swimming all the time, and that guy's cool as a cucumber in there. So. Just little things like that that happened throughout the season and sharing it with not only Connor but the rest of the guys. Just the time that we were able to spend in the locker room and, and build on buses and in hotels, just building on those relationships. I don't know if I can pick necessarily one one thing in hockey. I will say I actually thought of one. When we uh, – the way that we kind of, like, overcame our, like, Iowa curse was really cool to me. Like – Obviously, we had won at home against them and stuff like that. But going in there and having a lead going to the third and then all of a sudden, you know, a couple bounces, whatever. And I think they had a two-goal lead and we scored, like, two empty net goals to send it to overtime and then win in a shootout. Like, just that way of finally kind of getting that monkey off our back. And um, not that there's 
not that it was worth more than two points or anything like that, but obviously that was the team that we were battling closest with. And for whatever reason, going into that building and giving us problems. So um, just to face the amount of adversity we did in that game and uh, come out on top, I think it kind of gave us even more confidence that like, hey, the arena doesn't matter. The adversity doesn't matter. We just got to play our game and um, positive things will happen. So those are probably some of my highlights. Connor? Yeah, like Troy said, that uh, game in Iowa, I wasn't even a part of, and I was losing my mind on the bench. Uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, Troy calling his fight in between periods. I, I thought he was joking, but uh, no goalie wants to play the last 11 minutes of a game after sitting there for two hours. But uh, that was a fun one. Uh, even every time uh, nobody would notice, but everybody would make a big save. He, he'd give the little glove flick, and nobody in the rink but me knew what was going on. But uh, – Every time he did that, I had, a, I had a good chuckle with the boys down in the tunnel. So I had a, I had a lot of fun. I, I wouldn't change much. Very good. Well, guys, congratulations. Hap Holmes winners for the lowest goals against average in the American Hockey League. By the way, the first Admirals to win the award. So congratulations, guys, on a great season. I uh, we'll hope to see you very soon. Stay well. Yeah. Sure.